Everybody's been saying that you're up to no good. Everyone has been telling me that you got me hooked. You're playing it big time. You're feeding me lies. Everyone has been bugging me to sever the tie. Hey y'all, this is Debbie with the Food Prepping Channel. And today I'm coming to you for the second Fall Food Friday that is hosted by Fallon Moss of Moss Family TV. I'm so excited about this. I did last the one last week, the very first one, and there's some wonderful ladies um, in this collaboration, and I got some great recipes that I want to give a try out to. And also, I wanted to let the ladies know that I watch all the videos on my TV. On my TV, I cannot comment, but I can like and, and subscribe. So I did subscribe to every one of your channels if I wasn't already subscribed. And I also like the videos. So it it was it's i've had so much fun doing these and there's still two more weeks i think i'm not even sure how many fridays are in september but um i know there's at least two more weeks in it and this is the second week and this is things that foods that you would cook in the fall and once it starts getting cold i love to cook i love to cook anyway but I love to cook big meals and stuff like that and so today I am fixing potato soup that is one of my family's favorite things for winter and what I've got to do is I've got let's see one two three four five six seven stalks and these are little stalks they're not very big or whatever they're the celery hearts it comes two things in a pack um from walmart yeah i got them from walmart and so i'm going to cut up all seven of these and um what i'll do is i'll cut them in half and then just cut up into you know little cubes or whatever and then i've got four small these are very small onions so i've got four small onions that i've got to cut up and i'm going to go on i've got two sticks of butter i've got i forgot to cut my phone off i'm sorry i've got two sticks of butter that i've am going to put in here let me show you my pan this is the what is it copper chef the 11 inch this is the biggest um copper chef pot that they make this is the 11 inch and i'm hoping i can get right much um soup in here i have never used this before i usually use a big pot and I usually have someone to help me, but today I don't have anyone. It's just me, so I'm going to be using this, and I'm hoping that, you know, I'll be able to get it down so I can show y'all because this is amazing. And since there, I don't put anything in it but salt and pepper, the, the, you know, you're going to get your flavor from your celery and your onions. And that's why I put so much celery and onions in here. Because potatoes, let's face it, potatoes really don't have that much of uh, a taste. But I am using russet potatoes. And what I've got to do now is, like I said, I'm going to cut up these, these stalks of celery and cut up these onions. I'm going to go on and start um, sauteing those in two sticks of butter. Then I've got to cut up the potatoes, and I will bring you back when I get to that point. Um, but I'm going to go on with it, and I'll bring y'all back. Okay, y'all. All right, so here's all the onions and the celery cut up in here. You can see it's right much of it. And I've got a 10-pound bag of potatoes. I'm probably, I'm going to try for five pounds these are russet potatoes because russet potatoes does do the best for potato soup um so i'm shooting for five pounds of these because i'd like to have 
some um, these some of this soup left over for the weekend so we can eat it on you know over the weekend or whatever so I'm going to I've got this on 175 on my new wave and I'm just letting this simmer you know saute slowly right now while I cut up the potatoes and I'll bring you back when I get to that point okay y'all all right so I've got all the potatoes cut up and they're all in here I've got two quarts of water in this pitcher right here that y'all can't see but I'm gonna go on and put it all in here it may take more than that no, that's exactly right right there all right so I'm going to cut this on and I've got to put pepper in here let me get my little spoon And I'm going to go on and cut this on on sear to get it up to boiling and then I'll cut it down and I'm probably going to put uh, probably two teaspoons of coarse ground black pepper in here because it's oh it just wouldn't be good without pepper in it <laughs> I would be but pepper just gives it that oomph. <laughs> All right, and I'm probably going to put two teaspoons of kosher salt in here too because this is, potatoes have no salt and I haven't put salt in anything. The butter's got salt in it, but not very much. All right, so that's probably two teaspoons of kosher salt and a teaspoon of, I would say a teaspoon of coarse ground black pepper. And I'm gonna go on now and let this cook. And while this is cooking, I'm gonna get my cornbread ready um, and get it in the oven because you gotta have cornbread with uh, potato soup. And you know, I, it's really weird because I think it's like 87 degrees out here today. Um, let me check. Uh, what did I do with my phone? Let me check and tell y'all what temperature it is out here today. Eighty, 83 feels like 89. Um, is what it says so here I am making a, definitely a fall winter meal <laughs> for us but I you know really I guess it doesn't make any difference and probably some of y'all are gonna want to know where I got this recipe from this is um, I don't know if, if any of y'all know about it i don't know if they have them there where you live but there was shoney's restaurant and shoney's had potato soup just like this you don't put bacon in this you don't put cheese on this you don't put anything on this not at all you just cook this and let the potatoes cook down some and then you put these um soup crackers soup and oyster crackers in them and eat this and with some cornbread and oh my gosh the best meal you'll have so I'm gonna get this going and get it boiling and then I'm gonna cut it down and just let it simmer until it's done and I will bring y'all back hi y'all while I'm waiting for the um, cornbread the um, cast iron skillet to heat up in my oven I want to tell you a little bit about me if you don't um, if you don't know if you haven't been to my channel before uh, my name is Debbie I'm 64 I am a mother of four and a grandmother of six um, I have six grandchildren and so far pretty much all of them like my potato soup so um, they don't like, they don't all like my cornbread though, but 
I think that's just an age thing, but the oldest one is 10, the youngest one is uh, two months. Your, yeah, he is, let's see, two months. Yeah, two months. The youngest one is two months, all right. And with, I'm a Southern cook and I'm from Virginia. So my cornbread, if you don't know anything about Southern cooks or whatever, our cornbread isn't sweet. Our cornbread has cornmeal, buttermilk, an egg, um, the oil from the the cast iron skillet that's in that's in the um, oven heating up now, and um, you put it in your cast iron skillet and cook it until it gets done and it comes out really crispy and it's i mean i'll show you but i just wanted to tell you a little bit about myself um i am in a wheelchair so i do all my cooking at my dining room table which is right here this is my dining room table i have all kinds of um appliances this is my new wave i have two or three i think three slow cookers um crock pots what i call them i have one two three i think four air fryers i have the ninja foodie grill i have the ninja foodie i have um two uh, let's see two what are they called blenders but they're more than I don't know I can't think of it. and I also am getting a little uh, old <laughs> in my brain my brain is kind of leaving me sometimes so if I forget a word or whatever I hope you'll look over me I try not to it's making these videos helps me out a lot um, but I'm constantly cooking things now I can use my oven and which I do but I don't use my stove my stove is up too high for someone in a wheelchair so that's why we use the you know most people that do cook in a wheelchair do use something that is shorter than their stove now there are some people that still cook in their stove but I want to see my food when I'm cooking it I want to know what it looks like and all this so I have everything in here on my kitchen table and my everything all my spices are right here on my um, tools or you know your utensil things your spatulas and all that are right here behind me my dishes are here behind me um, my bowls are, are in the kitchen in the cabinets and all that but I do you know do most things right here at my kitchen table and so I'm going to go now I've got to go get my cast iron skillet out of the oven and make my cornbread and I will bring you back in just a little while and we're going to show you what this potato soup looks like okay y'all since I was telling you about the my cornbread that I make I decided to go on and show you so what I've got in here is I've got two and a half cups of cornmeal in here all right and now I'm going to put I always do the same measurements two and a half cups of cornmeal two and a half cups of buttermilk and if you don't have regular buttermilk I'm sure that most of you know that you can make buttermilk by putting um, getting a glass of milk and putting get two and a half cup <laughs> glass or whatever of milk and put two to three uh, tablespoons of vinegar in there and let it sit and for five or ten minutes and you'll see it get just as thick as this cornbread watch it's how thick oh, you can't see it there you go I'm doing it backwards so you can see my hand's not going to twist but so far all right, you see how thick it is? All right, now I'm gonna do a half a cup. All right, so then I put, all right, so there's the cornmeal, the buttermilk. And then I put one egg in here. All 
All right, and then I take my whisk or my fork. I just got out of fork. I didn't even get out of whisk. Break my egg up, and then I just stir this until it's all combined. Get your egg in there, get it all combined. All right, now this is, for some reason today, this is not going to be enough um, buttermilk. It's not, it's going to be too thick, so I'm going to have to put at least another half a cup of buttermilk in here. And I don't know why that is, because it usually always, it is really humid today, so maybe that, that's what it is, but I'm going to put, that's about a half a cup, and let's see how that does. See how thick this is, the, the uh, buttermilk is? And I've got the um, cast iron skillet in the oven heating up. And I always do that with my cast iron skillet. And I've got my grandma's. It was my grandma's. It's probably over. Let's see, my grandma would be. It's probably over at least 90 years old. Because my grandmother, if she was living, would be. I don't know. She died in 91. So I'm really not sure how, she, how old she would be. But she was 81 or 86 when she died so she'd be right old now and she got that when her cast iron skillet when she first got married which i think she was like 16 or 17 when she got married okay now this is perfect right now let me make sure that all the cornmeal is off of the bottom of it and i'm gonna let this sit here and then what I'm going to do next is I'll get my pan, my cast iron skillet out, and I will bring it in here, and I will pour the oil, pour the oil in here, and then I will pour it directly back into my cast iron skillet, and you'll hear that sizzling, and that's what makes it so crispy and crunchy on the top of it, and so good. Um, but I'll bring you back. I've got to let this sit now until that pan gets warm. I mean, it gets hot, and then I'll bring you back. Okay, y'all. You, you should be able to see the oil kind of... I poured the oil from the cast iron skillet right here into this. And then I'm going to pour this into the cast iron skillet. But this cast iron skillet is so hot, and I'm here by myself. And oh my gosh, it just scares me so bad. But this is my favorite thing to eat with with potato soup and I just couldn't let it go by without y'all seeing this right, let me set this fork down right here and if you listen you should be able to hear the frying can you hear it See how it's frying in there? Now this is gonna go back in the stove, I mean back in the oven for anywhere from, I don't know what it's, how long it's gonna take today with this, um, with the air and all like this, anywhere from 20 minutes to 35 minutes. But I will bring you back and next we're going to eat. Okay, y'all, the potato soup is almost done. I, what I do is I'll take my spoon, and because I know that it's almost done, I'll take the spoon and, and push down on it and make some of the potato mash up, and that gives it that, oh, gosh, the great taste. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in one cup. I have one cup of whole milk. And I'm going to put that in there, let it come back up to a boil, because this makes it a little bit creamier. 
Mm, mm, mm. This is going to be so good. I haven't had any in, well, probably a year <laughs> since I made any. All right, now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, take a, about a half a cup. I know you can't see me. Dang on it. All right, so I've got about a half a cup of milk right there. Oh, just dropped my fork. Hold on. Oh. <laughs> That's the one bad thing about cooking on the, my table. It's just not big enough. <laughs> I wish I had a big table, but I don't have a big place to live. So my table is the, about the only size that will fit in here. All right, so I've got um, cornstarch. I've got the Argo cornstarch. There's the little cup right there, half a cup of milk. And I don't have a spoon in here, so I'm just going to put in, uh, I would say about, I'm going to go on and do it, make it a little bit thicker. All right, so I've got cornstarch in this milk, and hopefully this is going to make that, I usually use flour, but... I just wanted to get the see what the cornstarch would do, see if that will thicken it up. All right, so let's go on and pour this in here. Let's see if it will thicken it up. Oh, yes. Oh my gosh, y'all, this is going to be so good. All right, so I've got about 10 more minutes on the cornbread, and I'm going to let this just sit here and simmer and thicken up. I think flour does thicken it up better, but it'll be fine. And I'm going to go on and um, fix me a plate. And butter my cornbread, I mean fix me a bowl, butter my cornbread and let it cool, let the soup cool off a little bit and I'll bring you back when it's done. This is going to be amazing y'all. Okay y'all, I'm back. Alright, so now it's time to taste this. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. Looks so good. I've got my, I put my little soup crackers in here. And here's my cornbread. I've just got it on a paper. And here is, let me zoom this out some so y'all can see this better. Okay, here is the cornbread. Now I want y'all to listen. It is a crispy coating because my cast iron skillet was hot. There's the inside. I used pure buttermilk with this with this um, thing of cornbread. I didn't use milk and vinegar. I used um, buttermilk. Right, and now let me show you the potato soup. Well, it's over there. You can't see it, but it was. It's cooked to perfection. <laughs> it really is. I can't wait to taste this. I had to. I've had to let it cool off, stir it, <laughs> let it cool off so I could show y'all. All right, there's my plate. Oh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, y'all. Mm -mm -mm. Now I'm going to take a bite of my cornbread. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. This is the absolute best dinner. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you, um, Fallon, for hosting this video. Please go and look through all the other women's um, File Food Friday 
videos and subscribe to them, like their videos, and I hope you'll like mine and give me a thumbs up, and I will talk to you later. Well, matter of fact, I'll see you next Friday. All right, y'all. Bye.